Hello, Steve here from Coles Family Butchers. Welcome back to my kitchen. I've got a big smile on my face because this is take two. I won't tell you what happened, this ain't take one. A couple of customers have asked me if I could do a video on boiled ham. I don't have a problem with that because I like ham. And I thought, as I'm doing ham, I'll do some peace pudding as well because I adore peace pudding. Now, ham has a classical reference, jambon. And ham is actually quite important because without ham, pork would have virtually no re relevance whatsoever in classical catering. Mr. Augustus Escoffier claims that there are four great hams in the world. One, I can't pronounce, so I won't bother. The second is Westphalian, the third is Prague, and the fourth is York ham from good old blighty. Now at York, the reason why it's York ham is the way we cure it. And for this dish, you will need. So, as you can see, gammon. I said gammon because until it's cooked, it's not ham. To make ham, you need gammon. That's what it is in its raw state. And essentially that's all you need to make ham. However, as I said, I am going to do it with peace pudding. You will also need a large pot. In the large pot, we're going to put the gammon in, add, add the peace pudding into some muslin, some onions, we're going to add in there as well, some string to tie them up, a pair of scissors to cut the string, and then we come to the, the bit that's debatable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain off the peas, the yellow split peas. There's 250 grams of yellow split peas and they've been soaking overnight. I'm going to strain those and I want the water from the peas because that will give some flavour to the ham. So they strained off. I'm going to tip those into the muslin. You can use a tea towel if you wish, but muslin is a lot easier off of that, pick up the peas I spilt, we're then going to pop in a couple of roughly chopped onions, it doesn't matter if they're large or small chopped, it really doesn't matter because we are going to blitz the hell out of it later. Put those in, then we're going to cut a piece of string and tie up the other end of the muslin cloth. Nice tight knot, we don't want it coming undone. I can't wait to taste this, I just adore peace pudding. Right, now we're going to pop in the ham. Gammon. Pop in the muslin cloth. Now this is controversial because Mr. Escoffier says you shouldn't add anything to a, a gammon when cooking it. However, I like flavour. So I'm going to use some, I've got some um, cauliflower leaves, some cabbage leaves, some carrot peelings, onion skins. It's all flavour. I'm going to pop those in. You won't need any salt because this the, the, the gammon I'm using is a smoked one, which is quite salty anyway. Right, you can see we've got a little bit of room in this uh, pot now. You can, as Mr. Escoffier says, just add plain water. If he'd have lived a little bit longer, the book I have on these is the fourth edition, and it evolved and evolved and evolved uh, according to taste. These days, our tastes are a little bit sweeter, so I'm going to add some full fat Coca-Cola. Some of our customers have done it with um, Fanta, some have done it with uh, lemonade, um, some have done it with ginger wine. It doesn't matter, it depends on your flavour, whatever you want. But I promise you, Coca-Cola does work. Well, what you want to do is, you want to make sure that the, hand, the gammon is covered. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in there. Now 
and a tiny bit more water because you didn't quite so you haven't covered it yet. It's now covered. What we're going to do now is put it on, bring it to the boil, and then simmer. Not even, not even simmer. We're going to, it's slightly less than a simmer. It's almost poaching it um, for 20 minutes per 500 grams. This particular gammon is three and a half kilos, so that's seven times 20, which is an hour and a half, hour and twenty, two hours and 20 minutes. So once it's come to the boil, I'm then going to poach it for two hours and 20 minutes. Okay, what I've done now is I've taken the, the ham off the heat half an hour before it's due to be cooked. The reason for that is I'm going to do what Mr. Escoffier says and braise it in either sherry, Madeira or port. And then I'm going to glaze it. If you were going to use this as just a ham, you would leave it on the heat for the full, full cooking time, all right? Then you would put a lid on it, put it in a sink, fill the, half fill the sink with cold water and let the ham cool down in its own juices. That way it'd be so much moister. But I'm not doing that. I'm doing it glazed and braised. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ham out of the water on a chopping board and now I'm going to remove the netting of course you would do this this might be a little bit warm you would do this when it's cold if you're cooking it just as a ham Using the scissors, a little bit tricky. Now, what I'm going to now try and do is remove the netting, but keep the skin in place. Okay, that's done. Now what I'm going to do, is using my knife, just take off the skin. Leave as much fat as you can on, just take the skin off. And I'll come back to you when this is skinned. Right, the, the ham is now skinned. All the skin is on, but I've left most of the fat on because that's what you want to do. Now what I need to do is to transfer it back into a pot to go in the oven. This pot is full of stock and some unfinished piece pudding. So luckily I have two pots. Clean pot. Now what we're going to do is Pop the ham, because it now is ham because it's almost cooked, back into the pan. Now, I have to admit, although I'm a classically trained chef, I have never done this before. What Mr. Escoffier recommends is, you then braise it for about half an hour with either Madeira, Sherry or Port. I'm not a great lover of Madeira or Sherry, but I do like Port. Now whatever you do ladies, this part is very dangerous. Don't do it yourselves, you may die. This port has been opened, it might have gone off. Get your husband to try this. Yep, it's okay. Pour in about half an inch in depth into the pan. Pop a lid on and then put it in the oven for about half an hour. 
180, 190 gas mop four stroke for a little bit. Okay, whilst the ham is in the oven braising, I'm now going to deal with, with the best bit, the piece pudding. So what we're going to do is we're now going to take out our muslin cloth, carefully because it's very well it's hot. Scrape off any vegetable bits. That is really hot. And pop it on our chopping board. We can now get rid of the pan. Now we're going to open it. So open it's quite simple. Cut the string. When I say quite simple, may not be quite simple. Okay, we're in. In here, you have got a bunch of loveliness. The peas are cooked, the onion is cooked. All we need to do now is quite simply put it into our food processor and blitz the hell out of it. Okay, I've blitzed this for quite some time, a couple of minutes. I've also added three ladlefuls of the, uh, the liquid that I cooked it in, seasoned it with salt and pepper, and it's perfect. I'll be using some of this with the, the ham when I serve it for the main meal, and whatever's left, I'll leave cold, spread on some bread, put some of the ham on top, in a sandwich, one of the greatest sandwiches you'll ever have. Okie dokie. This had its half an hour in the oven. That's the cooking time. Because it had most of the cooking time in the water. The other half an hour in the pan, in the pot with the, the port. I'm just going to probe it. Check it's cooked. We're done. Right. Now what we do is transfer it because we're now going to glaze it from this pan. Don't worry about the little bit of pork that's left in the, uh, the pot because we'll be using that in the gravy. So transfer it to the a roasting tray. Remove that. Now what I'm going to do is score it. I'm going to use this one. But I'm going to score the fat. All you're doing basically is just cutting through the fat. And then we'll cut through this way, through this way, and through this way. Now at this point you can use one of several things. You can either dust it with cast, uh, ice and sugar and pop it under a salamander. You can squeeze demerara sugar onto it. You can use honey. But me, I'm going to use a bit of golden syrup. And all we're going to do is dribble this over the top. And now it's a run down. Oh, 
and we're going to pop it back in the oven for half an hour or so to let it glaze up. Okay, now it's glazed beautifully. All we need to do now is carve it and then serve it. Now I'm so glad about the carving bit because it gives me an opportunity to use my brand spanking new knife. It is a little bit larger than what I expected, which is why I'm working on the chopping board this way, because this way it don't work. So, let's see how sharp it is. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're sharp. Oh, that's sharp. Right, cooked to perfection. Nice and juicy, just what we want. Let's put it on the flat side down, put our fork in, and carve away. This knife is damn good. And I'll carry on carving until I've got enough for myself, my wife, my daughter and my granddaughter, which I might add is our social bubble, just so you know we're not breaking the law, and I'll come back to you when it's all on the platter. Okay, here it all is. It's ham. I put some chicken on there as well. We've got a bit of mashed potatoes, some broccoli, some uh, carrot and sweet mash, some cabbage, some cauliflower cheese, some braised onion, some fried um, celeriac, a few Yorkshire puddings. All we need now is a piece de resistance. The piece pudding. Ah. Oh. Now where would I put this? I'll oh, bugger it, I haven't got enough room. I'll have to put this on a separate plate and just have a plate to myself. Enjoy! <laughs>